Munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and welcome back to another review of some hamster cages. Today I'm going to be discussing all about DIY bin cages, specifically the 50 gallon 200 quart Sterilite bin cage. So today's video is going to be a positive one, so I will be talking about the pros and cons. These are the bins that I typically use at my rescue here, and I use them for a plethora of different species of hamsters and can use these for mice as well. And of course, gerbils cannot use plastic enclosures because they are capable of chewing out of them. They are very strong and have powerful incisors. They can bite through just about anything, including a PVC pipe. Yeah. It happened. What you see behind me are two separate 50 gallon Sterilite bin cages. They come in a variety of colors. Usually you find the red ones during Christmas time and usually you can find the tape sandy one right here or you can find a black lid one or a navy blue lid. These are the ones that I typically will use here at the rescue because they are the biggest bins you can possibly find out there on the market besides a very elongated Christmas bin. These are great for stacking up on my rack system that I have currently at the rescue where I have a three-story system. I have one on top of the other on top of the other. However, as you can see right here, you can make bin cages to stack on top of each other. Now, when I say DIY, you will have to create ventilation because you should not be having a lid that has no ventilation. You could suffocate your animal and or if you decide to poke holes in the lid, that causes a lot of temperature and humidity buildup inside of the bin here which is very bad for a very small animal and could make them sick, lethargic, and have some issues with respiratory or possibly even organ failure if they're way too overwhelmed and stressed inside of a very humid environment. That's why it's really hard to keep hamsters in places with high humidity, such as the Philippines, where it becomes an issue for hamster owners who have expressed to me that it becomes very hard in these summer times and the monsoon seasons to even keep their hamster stable because unfortunately they do go into shock or they do have some sort of problem. So that's why ventilation is key here for these. That's why there is two different styles. Having ventilation on the side here is a great idea if you want to stack them up if you don't have shelf. And of course this lid here is something that is very easy to make. I have my own video about how to make DIY bin cage lids. Please go check that out if you're curious to know how I made these lids here. And so this one just has hard wire. It's also called chicken wire, but there's different types of chicken wire. So just hard wire, not mesh wire. Mesh is a little bit too easy to gnaw through. So gotta get the metal. Now this is really great here and does that look nice too? A lot of people complain that bin cages are absolutely atrocious to look at and if they try to so much as so DIY the lid it looks like garbage but I think this is a beautiful lid here and you can put tape around the rip to give it a nice aesthetic look. So we're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of this enclosure but mainly the cons are mostly a nitpick but this is a good enclosure to be using because of the size that this bin is. So this one right here is roughly around 648 square inches which is the exact same size as a 40 gallon breeder tank and it is much bigger than the preview 528. Right in here you probably are seeing a little sign this is Pluto so Pluto is currently in here. I did a deep clean today so this is all brand new for her with some of the items she's used and some past bedding in here but I am using her bin as demonstration today just to show you guys what you can set up inside of a bin cage such as this one. Now this one you can easily find at Walmart, Lowe's. You can find the Christmas bins at Target. They are the red lid and you can find this also on Amazon. However, I think on Amazon they do the sets of four. So unfortunately, if you want to find this on Amazon, you might have to purchase four of these. This right here is 17 inches tall, which is great for Syrian hamster use because unfortunately, if you guys are familiar with having Syrians in very low bin cages, they typically like to go up top and chew the lid. Plus with lower enclosures, you cannot stick in a 12 inch wheel, which is what we have in here right now as demonstrated. Unfortunately, one of the nitpicks or the cons with this is that if you were to get the biggest size wheel possible, you would have to make sure that your bedding on this side is lower 
and the bedding on this side is higher. But it still, as a positive, can fit in the biggest size wheel for hamsters, which is the 12 inch wheel. So this is a really great cage to be using to be piling in a lot of bedding. You can definitely add depth with that 17 inches of height, but just keep in mind about the wheel. It all depends on your style of wheel and what wheel you are using right now. A lot of people don't really like the aesthetic look of bin cages. They think they're really cheap and they are very cheap with this style being around $26 to $28, possibly even $30 with tax. So it is a good option. So another thing you might be thinking about, which can be a negative, is it's kind of hard to see inside of here. This is kind of cloudy and it is the clear bin. So this is the clearest it's ever gonna get. It's not to be as fancy as a fish tank which has beautiful glass unfortunately you will be getting something like this now you can however make your bin cage into a theme bin cage you can have a theme going on you can have colorful bedding if you want if you really don't like the look of it you can at least jazz it up with other means say with this wheel here if we were to have green bedding that would make this cage a green theme and it will look more appealing to the eyes so if you don't really like what you see, you can improve upon it. So for the lid here, like I had said previously, unfortunately, if you do have any climbing toys inside of this type of enclosure and you have created a ventilation up top here, it is still possible for the hamster to get up top here and to chew the sides of the enclosure. Say for instance, like this right here, this has been chewed up, the tape is already kind of falling off. Not all hamsters will have this type of behavior. So it depending on your little animal, whether it be a male or female, young or old, your hamster will have different energy levels and different personalities because hamsters have been researched to have moods. Isn't that very interesting? Yes, they are very moody creatures with their own type of personality and style. But I did have in the past some very energetic female hamsters that unfortunately were so energetic they could not be inside of wire enclosures because they wanted to get out and mate. Yes, of course, they wanted to go mate with the fellas of the room just because everybody is in the pet room it's its own separate room filled with a lot of small animals that we take care of at my rescue and some of my personal hammies too but of course if you have a syrians they could chew up the sides here and mice are hard little workers they definitely do chew their stuff that they have inside of their enclosure and they can actually probably chew the sides of here but not as severe as say for instance Syrian hamsters trying to get out. So that is just one downside to that. Of course, it is also another downside that when you get this type of bin, you have to just start DIYing the lid just because it does not come with ventilation. That is a downside versus other enclosures like the Preview 528, which is all ready to go. You just have to set up your own stuff inside of it. This you need to at least spend a good, maybe half an hour to an hour to create a beautiful lid. So like I was saying before, you have to make sure that if you do have a large wheel inside of here, that it's not going to touch the top. I have a climbing toy here. We got a Heidi House and climbing thing over here. We do have another climbing and Heidi House over there. And then of course, under here, we kind of have like a tunnel. It's a man-made tunnel where there's a bendy bridge right here. There's a little bit of nesting material in here and then nesting material bedding is up here. And then of course, there's the food and water dish center over there. Now, the great thing about DIYing bin cages, if you are comfortable enough with the enclosure to mess around with it is you can create your own attachments for a bin cage. You can come in from the top, put maybe like a tube that's big enough for your size of animal, put a tube in here so it can connect maybe to an outside source, maybe a smaller enclosure or like a playpen style enclosure, but you should always have a main cage. And this is great because the floor space is not divided up. It's just one big surface area. And that's a really good reason why you should get it because this is going to be easy to clean. So I have taken this off. I have this really big space here that I can just pick up stuff, put it in. Oh, I need to change out the litter. Here goes the litter, putting it back in. Simple as that. Oh, I need to scoop out with the pan the bedding and then place more bedding inside here. Get that all nice and spread out. Voila! It's simple. It's easy to use. 
and when it comes to interacting and taming your animal because a lot of us have untamable little creatures that maybe we got from the pet store or maybe we got from an owner who didn't understand how to take care of the little one. If you are into rescuing, thank you. It could be so much easier to scoop up your little companion rather than having one tiny entryway and not being able to get your companion. This is great, I love it, that's why I use them. But the con about this specific part of this enclosure is that you are still coming in from above. Because they are prey animals, unfortunately, they will still kind of get spooked and scared if you're coming from above. So make sure whenever interacting with your animal to let them sniff you first and then gently, without fear or hesitation, just scoop them up. Don't worry about it, don't hesitate. Don't be fearful of your little creature. That's how they get used to you. And with daily handling sessions, your little one will start to calm down if you have one of those very high energetic animals. And what's great about this is that you can attach stuff to the lid here. As you can see, there is a chew toy right here, but if you're gonna be using this for say, I don't know, mice colony, you can actually put in some hammocks here because this is hard wire. But you can't unfortunately have any sort of ledges or bridges without actually drilling holes into here. I wouldn't recommend it because maybe you just don't want to have that specific bridge or accessory inside the enclosure all the time. So. What I do is I completely leave these sides empty. I don't want to be messing with them because I do plan on reusing them a bunch and I don't want to just, for instance, since some people have done this, stick the water bottle on the outside and drill a hole so the nozzle gets in there. That is an option to people if they really hate the fact that their animal is climbing on top of the water bottle making a ton of noise, but I don't like drilling holes in the sides here because you're not gonna be able to fill it back up again if you don't want the water bottle there. But this cage has endless possibilities. You can DIY it the way you want to. So thank you guys for checking out today's video about the 50 gallon, 200 quart Sterilite bin cage. These I absolutely love using and I hope you guys are encouraged to find these bins. And if you're in the local stores and you're trying to find it and you might not know what the label looks like and you're trying to find the lid, this is what the top of the lid looks like here. It's got ribs right here. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, hit like to show support for the channel and for the video so others can see it. Please leave me a comment if you are currently using a 50 gallon stair light bin cage or maybe if you've used it in the past, let me know what your thoughts were. And if you're new here and would like to become a part of the Munchkin family, please subscribe. Catch you later. Bye. -bye.